Hello week to warrior. I am in a shit state of not having slept in a fucking, not having slept well in a long time. I can't really rest either. I have to take care of my family because I have to like drive an hour and a half to go get raw milk for my children because they all throw up. They have to drink pasteurized milk and um, a whole bunch of other things I have to do. I mean, it's not the worst because, like, I make my own schedule, but I don't make my own schedule because I'm a father and a husband. Anyone who's a father and a husband knows that your schedule is necessity, and every business owner knows that your schedule is necessity, as is this headache I have. But I was talking to my dad, like, yesterday, the day before. I can't really remember because my memory is shit right now. But he was kind of like, he was just expressing sorrow that I had to like go through this. He's like, that's like really shit, you know? Like, I, it sucks that you have to like have this disposition toward insomnia that brings on gut issues and all these problems and it's a pain in the ass to fix. You have to spend your whole life fixing it. Like, wow, that's a real pain in the ass. And I'm like, well, I mean, you have cancer. So like, I feel like he has it worse at the moment. Like, oh, definitely. I mean, like, but also, he's had it worse more over his whole life. Because I actually, like, had the ability to... Well, he had less... So, this is the interesting thing. So, his mother grew up on a farm in Yugoslavia. So, that means he got all of her bacteria and enzymes and stuff. So, he's very healthy for most of his life. And it took him a while of eating, like, shit till he was 57. For... 56. Till he was 56 for his body to break down and develop cancer as a result of his poor lifestyle and eating habits. So, but I mean, ultimately he didn't have the ability to figure any of this stuff out though because he was completely poor his child had to steal food out of dumpsters, tape his shoes together and like pulled himself up by his bootstraps and very much my hero for a lot of reasons, this being one of them. Um, though not even the predominant reason, just a, a side note in the margin. But anyway though, so, um, does all this and like, I mean, how is he going to figure out how to be healthy though in the time period he grew up? I mean, the only reason I'm able to figure this out is I have the internet, which is crazy and like books and time and wealthy parents who can afford to sustain me when I cannot sustain myself and I am sick or I have to like take time off or whatever to like heal myself. So and provide me money for food if I need money for food the business and when business is not provided. Very, very helpful. Like I've had all these blessings that allow me to figure this out. But even with all these blessings, it's still like just a tremendous pain in the ass because the food quality is very poor. And it's just like, I mean, I don't know, I've put systems in place now to make sure this doesn't happen again. I'm just kind of in the thick of it right now. So I have to like heal my body now and then, um, yeah, implement the systems and keep the systems in place to make sure this doesn't happen again. I can get progressively healthier. This is stressing my body progressively to the point where I now am having shit time. I'm still not bad though. Cause I mean, like I'm so on it that like, even though I feel like, well, I don't know. I mean, like, I don't want to have like a heart attack or something like that. That's the thing like, I worry about with just the, cause just the stress I feel is just so, cause I can't sleep. So it's just like, where's the stress go? It just doesn't go anywhere. It just accumulates until you just feel like your head's splitting, your heart's stressed, and your kidneys are stressed. So I just need to go lie down for a while and drink spring water. Um, but anyway, though, so my dad was expressing that he felt bad for me. And I was just like, well, I don't feel bad for me, though, because here's the kicker. I'm just experiencing this stuff now. Everyone's experienced some sort of health problem or some loved one will or you will at some point in your life. So, whether or not you, it's not a matter of whether, it's when. So, really, I actually had the blessing to experience all these problems when I had the time and resources to <coughs> make a career out of this and actually, I just, I just decided, it's like, um, so my dad said this thing to me one time, this is the title of the video, and I love to say, he said, don't get sad, get mad. Then he has another saying that he doesn't say it at the same time. I'm the one who put these together, but he says, but his brilliance is that he says them separately. Um, my astuteness is putting them together, I guess. And that's why father son dynamics go well together. But he'd be like, don't get sad, get mad. And then other times 
he would say, don't get angry, get even. He would say this not in the context of revenge, but like, let's say like, I'm mad that like, I didn't get all the points on a test or something. He'd be like, don't get, um, don't like, 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 you know, like, like, like sad about it. Like, don't get sad, get mad. Like get mad, get motivated to do something. Or if you're angry, like, well, don't be angry, get even. Like, go make sure you actually get what you deserve. Also, I mean, he didn't exclude this from the context. Like, if someone's bullying you, he's always very clear. Like, you have to, like, hurt them badly so that they stop. And then my own experience being bullied uh, in middle school did not end until, like, it was just mostly verbal bullying. People just being dicks. This one kid, like, flipped my desk at one point. And then, um... I just, I gave him the very strong impression that I was going to kill him if he ever laid a hand on me again. And I probably would have. And he never laid a hand on me again. But then other people, like, people were just kind of dicks to me in middle school. And, but it ended, though, this one time. This is where it ended, and it was just marvelous. And, um, because even giving someone the strong impression that you'll murder them if they lay a hand on you, it's not enough to actually modify behavior uh, I'm just this on filter because I just I haven't slept in so long and I'm just in this insomnia state So I'm filming on a lot of videos So you can just get a glimpse of I don't know insomnia I hope you don't fucking meet him again. This shit sucks. So Okay, but anyway though, so it wasn't enough what you have to do is you have like I had to do this kid um, <laughs> I'll name drop just in case he's ever a cop or any well should I name drop? No, no. He had aspirations to be a police officer. So just on the off chance that he ever decided to become a police officer and change his ways, I won't name drop. Probably just being naive, but you know who you are. Uncle Devin's watching him. <laughs> anyway, though, so this kid, total dickhead, uh, he just keeps on fucking being a dick to me. I forget what was happening, but I was like in the middle of it, middle of school. I wasn't really sleeping much. I was having a fucking time. And this kid's just fucking like picking on me. He's being, just saying shit. And I'm just like looking at him like, don't fucking touch me. Just don't fucking touch me. Don't fucking touch me. And he grabs like, like my shirt or something. And I'm just like, like I just, in my head, I'm just like, thank fucking God. So I just grab both lapels of his jacket. And I just pull him right toward me as I incept, sidestep, and put all my weight into him. As I literally did like a turning slam throw and slammed him right into the concrete wall behind me of the gym. And he cracked his skull. Fuck him. Wish I killed him. Not actually, maybe. I don't know. I don't care. Fuck him. You attack me, it's a dangerous fucking thing to do, and you get whatever it does coming to you. And anyway. Since I adopted that mentality of attacking me is a dangerous thing to do, attacking me consists of the legal definition of assault, which is um, giving me sufficient reason to believe that you're going to cause me death or bodily harm, which constitutes approaching me threateningly without stopping. So I had this whole thing, like you literally go look up your legal definition of assault. I have the whole thing mapped out my head. I know exactly what constitutes assault. I have the people in public just being dicks, I don't know if I have a punchable face or whatever, but they've decided they're gonna they're gonna try to fuck me up because today is my day. And like I just look at them and I'm like, don't take another fucking step towards me. And uh if they do that, then I'm just gonna fucking end them. Or I mean that's if like, like my wife or someone's around me. If anyone else is I mean like depends on my ability to retreat. There's a whole bunch of stuff around me. But I mean, at the end of the day, I'm very willing to fuck someone up. If you communicate that to them by moving towards them and starting to throw jabs, they leave you alone. Sometimes not even until then. It's very weird. The crazies are getting more confident in the uh, post-COVID world. I noticed like that was when it sort of started. That's the start of people trying to fight me in public. Not even for any particular reason. Just like I'm walking and someone's like, you didn't hold the door open for me, asshole. Fuck you. Like literally this happened to me. I'm just like, what? And he's just like, you didn't fucking, fuck you, man, you motherfucker, you fucking, just, just running toward me, this huge dude. And I'm like, what the, like, I don't even have time, I'm sorry, start like moving toward me, I start fucking, and the guy backs off, and I'm just like, what the actual fuck in my head? I didn't even have time to think. And like, that happened to me once post COVID, and then uh, during COVID, there was this loon bat who was just like, 
I don't know. I don't know who appointed him to be fucking Batman, but like he was going around making sure everyone was following at every letter of whatever rules he made up in his head. And if you weren't, he was going to beat you to a fucking pulp in the middle of Market Basket. And I wasn't fucking taking that shit. You don't fucking tell me what to do because you're a fucking psychopath and because the world's experiencing a weird crisis thing that may or may not be made up or may be exaggerated to varying degrees. Who knows? The data wasn't in yet. But just because that's going on and you're a fucking loon bat psychopath doesn't mean you tell me what to do with my pregnant wife is standing next to me. So we made that very clear to this fuckhead and he backed the fuck off because otherwise I was going to put him in the fucking hospital. I don't know. I don't want to do that, but I will because what the fuck? So anyway, I just have this mentality and I, I believe I adopted it from my father. I know I adopted it from my father who grew up in South Providence where he had to defend his house with a sword and a BB gun. I shit you not. Um, and the neighbors would shoot his windows out with 22s. So he may have conveyed this mentality to me in some ways because I, I don't like being fucked with by psychopaths. It's a real thing that bothers me. Some people seem fine with it. I don't, I'm not fine with it. I'm really not. I carry a knife on me at all times. I have like a lot of knives on me. Wait, where's it? Here's just one of many knives I have on me at all times. I just, not that they'd ever want to use them. It's just the weirdest. It's like that guy that attacked me in um, downtown Averill. Uh, that was the only day I haven't been carrying a knife in like years. It's just weird. It's like they can smell it. They're just like, Ugh. I don't know. And like people, like my wife asked me, like, well, why? I mean, like, did you attract that? Like, why would that happen? You know, like maybe again, I like I'll admit I maybe have a punchable face, but like, I believe that that happened to me because if it happened to someone else, they would have gotten their face pounded in. And it would have been on the front page of like the Daily News, like uh, lunatic escaped from asylum beats the shit out of elderly lady. But no, God is good, so it happened to some fucking weirdo who just happens to be paranoid and has ten years of martial arts training. So and live competition. So I'm legitimately. I'm, it still worries me because like that's insanely disturbing behavior. So and anything can happen in a fight, like. People be like, you're so good at fighting. Why do you feel like you have to hurt people? And what I say to them is I'm so good at fighting that I understand that anything can happen in a fight. And I understand that if you're a six foot five, 230 pound lunatic psychopath, like this guy was, this guy was nuts. Like it's built like a gorilla. He's a big, big ass white dude, like big, broad shouldered, kind of chubby just looked like a fucking stupid bully who was big so people just gave him a big birth for his whole life and he just had reached the age of 35 and upon culminating 10 years of drinking and methamphetamine use he was gonna start a fight with someone in the middle of fucking Haverhill that's this guy he just ran into me and I had about three seconds to process that this was happening and my first instinct was to try to reason. Within one second, I realized that wasn't happening as he kept on advancing. And luckily my instincts are when someone fucking big and scary is advancing, you throw a fucking jab to the face, stick your face in their belly and slam their head in the fucking concrete. I'm not dying and leaving my wife and children alone in this world because some big asshole has problems. Anyway, so I have this mentality of don't get sad, get mad, don't get angry, get even. So my dad's expressing to me that, um, like, poor Devin for having insomnia. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, I just hate the, 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 the sound of, like, poor Devin. Like, no. Like, I'm not a fucking victim. I mean, like, maybe I'd be, I don't know. Like, even if I, like, grew up in Somalia, I'd just become a Somali warlord. Like, if I identify that my situation is fucked, I will analyze the chessboard and move accordingly. I would rather be ashes than dust. I'm just like, I don't know. I'm not going to like hurt people because I don't want to hurt people. Like, I want to like help people. I want to make the world better. So even if I was a Somali warlord, I'd be like a Robin Hood style Somali warlord where I just go after the the, the worst Somali warlord. Like I go after like the pedophile race. I'd be like, I 
have nothing to lose because I have health problems and I was born in Somalia and I have no idea how to fix it. So I'm just going to kill pedophiles. Let's build a fucking billion dollar empire on the corpses of pedophiles. Maybe someone will write a book about me. And maybe a song. And that'll be like a cool painting in like a kid's nursery. And they'll be like, who's that guy with a bunch of pedophile heads mounted on spikes, mommy? And they're like, that's Devin, the patron saint of little boys who grow up big and strong because they weren't molested. And it's like, wow, I want to be just like him. It's like, well, just eat meat, train with kettlebells. It's like, dude, jujitsu. I'm fucking tearing up because I'm a lunatic softie who wants to help me. Fuck. <sighs> but anyway, I just have this mentality. So like...
We just live in a world of sick people. So no one wants to train because they're all sick. Even me, I can't train as much as I want to. I can't even train half the time. I'm fucking sick. So I'm just making content for sick people about how it sucks to be sick, about how I'm struggling with being sick to not get sick and not raise sick kids in a sick world. A sick fucking stupid people who poison the food. Weak the fucking warrior. Tune in. Let's end this video at 224 because that's the year. Woo!